the wonder of it is, in some ways, is how we humans did not go the way of the woolly mammoths. That is the wonder of it. Yeah. We, we did have a bottleneck. I mean, we know this yeah. is, there was definitely a bottleneck in both population and genetic diversity associated with the, the time frame of the younger dryers. Yep. It's kind of funny. There was a study done recently. Uh, Antonio Zamora has done some good little short YouTube videos on it if people are interested. But it's, it is a study that shows that there was, a, across the world, all populations of humans almost everywhere, and these are disconnected, isolated groups, simultaneously went through uh, a decrease in in genetic diversity, mm -hmm. and in, particularly in male populations, actually, uh, and it's all associated with a period of time shortly after the onset of the younger dryas. And of course, it's the study's authors don't make a connection to, you know, the younger dryas period because it's still a debated topic, I guess, in 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 what you'd call mainstream science. Mm -hmm. But they said that well, perhaps it was just some sort of somehow simultaneous change in breeding and preference patterns between these isolated and different groups of people that re re resulted right. in this genetic diversity. But it also coincides with this extinction event and turns out we're megafauna. I mean, I'm certainly megafauna. Or 90% um, of the world's population got wiped out. Well, uh, it's hard to say it what wasn't, percentage. It wasn't that. It, there, it was a bottleneck in population and yeah. in just diversity, but I'm not sure if it was that much. But. Yeah, it was probably... I mean, it could have been, I, I mean, we're just saying kind of at the beginning of piecing this together. I mean, clearly the human species was affected by these events. You don't have events that wipe out half the megafaunal mm. species on Earth and yeah. not affect the other half of the megafaunal species that survived. It's not like half the species came through completely unscathed, but the severity and magnitude of those events completely exterminated half the other species, Yeah. right? We we know. Look look at the the how close the bison, the American bison came to becoming extinct around the turn of the century. There was only a few hundred individuals. Mm -hmm. Now you know we can go to the grocery store and buy bison burger. Right, a thousand, ten thousand years from now, you could completely miss the fact that bison came this close to becoming extinct species, because yeah. it's only you know within a few generations. Once we made up the mind, you know, people decided that they wanted to salvage the species, it didn't take long for the species to recover. So, I mean, 10,000 or 12,000 or 13,000 years ago, a species may have come that close to extinction, but there were still enough numbers that, that the species within a few centuries could completely re could, could recover. See, and it brings us to the question of, you know, how, how drastically were humans affected? Yeah, and, and I, I think there's parts of the world as well. I mean, it's not, as you were saying, Younger Dryas, although it was probably the most dramatic thing to happen to the planet in maybe Correct. five million yes. years, it wasn't... Five million? Yeah, I mean, it yeah. It, yeah, it might have been the worst thing that's happened to the planet in five million, certainly from an wow. extinction perspective, but it's not... There were parts of the planet that didn't weren't as affected as... Other, as, as badly affected as others. Certainly North and South America were tremendously impacted with the species that went, went extinct. We see a similar thing in Europe, but you look at Africa or Australia and there seems to have been much less much less impact. I mean, that's one of the, you know, Af Africa has a lot of megafauna and you, you look at the, right. the, the what we estimate the age of lots of that megafauna is still going to be like two to three million years old. Like those species also live through uh, the younger dries. Australia is somewhat similar. You'd Australia did undergo very severe mass extinction, but it was much earlier yeah. than the younger dryas. Yeah. Now, if you look at percentages, North and South America both experienced about a 75% reduction in megafaunal species. Yeah. So in other words, North America Bad. lost about three quarters of the big animals. I mean, think about think about the animals that used to be here in North America. Four species of proboscideans. You had the the, the, the sort of woolly mammoth, the Colombian mammoth, the imperial mammoth. Um, you had mastodons. You had dire wolves. You had giant cave bears. You had huge bears. moose. You had giant deer. Armadillos. Giant, what? Armadillos. Giant armadillos. Yeah. Size of a Volkswagen. Bro. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and you Lord. had yeah, and, and giant ground sloths. I mean, yeah. the list was up to like close to a hundred species, right? How do we know we had armadillos that big? Because we found her remains. <laughs> yeah. 
Go through Cincinnati Natural Airport sometimes. Oh, yeah. Cincinnati Airport, I went through there the other day. They actually had the skeletons. They had a dire wolf. They had a saber toothed tiger. They had mastodons. They had one of the big elk, the giant elk. That yeah. Just Whoa. Like, oh, my God. Yeah. yeah. So. Short faced bear. Now, okay, so North and South America both lost about three quarters of their species. Eurasia lost a little more than a third. About 35% of species in Eurasia went extinct by the end of the Younger Dryas. Africa, 10 to 12%. Hmm. So a lot of the big animals in Africa are the survivors of the Pleistocene. People don't realize that. When you start looking at rhinos and hippos and right. elephants and, and giraffes and all the rest of them. So clearly the, 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 the cataclysm, the Younger Dryas cataclysm was not uniform around the whole planet. Right. Now, one of the other things that I've noticed from going back into literature um, is that a lot of times, going back to the idea of how humans were affected, um, you had places where there was obvious settlements, had been there for centuries, and then all of a sudden they're abandoned. The usual assumption was, well, these people got up and migrated somewhere else. Problem is, is then the other places you find evidence of human occupation, and they're gone at the same time. You find quarries all over non-glaciated North American settlement camps and things like that where people were living, working. You find the the uh, the refuse pits, the, the middens, all of the things that was evidence that there was a, a, a fairly long period of occupation and then all of a sudden it's, it's it ends. And that, that termination coincides in many cases with the beginning of the Younger Dryas. Yeah. And it's probably more a case less a case that they got up and moved somewhere else is that they didn't survive. Right. Like a quarry, uh, you know, where they're, they're quarrying flint or stones for their, for their spear points and things are active for centuries, and then all of a sudden they're abandoned. Oh, well, they got up and moved somewhere else. Well, where'd they move to? But what's more likely is that, yeah, they, that, that, that particular social group died out, and that was the end of it. Um, How much debate is there over what caused the Younger Dryas, whether it be comets or solar ejections or all of the above? <sighs> well, there's still debate, I'd say that. There, yeah. there's, there, I, 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 I mean, there's at this point, what, 160-odd papers peer-reviewed that, that the vast majority are very much in favor of the, 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 the uh, cosmic impact slash airburst mm. theory. Airburst uh, meaning like it explodes when it hits well, the atmosphere. Yeah, so it's initially I think people were thinking about like thinking of it in terms of a single impact, but it very much seems like it was a yeah a series uh, and potentially different periods of of cosmic impacts and airbursts. Airbursts are also traumatic. I mean, we have there's actually been a few really good studies on sites that show cosmic input. It's not related to the younger Dryas, but Dr. Stephen Collins at Tel El Hamam mm -hmm. mm -hmm. basically discovered the source of the biblical Sodom and Gomorrah story. He, oh, he did wow. a digging on a site and they've shown that that site was actually subjected to a cosmic airburst and it literally matches all the stories that's in the in the Bible, which you would probably attribute that to the wrath of God if you had happened to witness that from, you know, a, a hill right. a few kilometers away. But yeah, I mean, airbursts are bad as well. <laughs>